Hello again, this is Michael Harris. This is the three biggest mistakes yoga studio owners make that create losses. The reason I do this is over the years, I've, um, through my experience of owning studios, etc., I've really narrowed it down to just a couple of reasons that studios um, don't make any money and yoga studios don't pay them, yoga studio owners don't pay themselves. So I created this to um, help everybody um, make changes. So let's just go right into it. Okay, a couple of guidelines. Uh, keep an open mind today. Uh, allow yourself to see new ideas. Remember, not everything will work for you. Um, ask questions. Uh, please type in any questions that you have right there on the side and we we'll, will address them. If there's questions that we don't get to today, I will make a note of who asked the question and uh, get back to you personally with that too. Uh, be willing to make changes as you see. Trust the process and experience an aha moment. So there should be several aha moments um, in what we're gonna talk about today that can benefit you right now, today. If you have a notepad, I encourage you to have it nearby because we are gonna move pretty fast and you, you may wanna create um, a couple of notes as we go. Okay. Some of you don't know who I am, so I, I want to tell you who I am. Again, my name is Michael Harris. I practice yoga since 1987. Um, I've been certified in three different yoga teacher trainings. Nichala Joy Devi, which is Yoga the Heart, um, Eric Schiffman, and then Bikram in 1998. I also have a lot of Ashtanga experience and study with a lot of Ashtanga teachers primarily in the early 90s. Um, I've owned two successful yoga studios since 1999. I sold my second one last year. Uh, both of them are still in business. I've literally trained probably about 7,000 teachers, mostly within the, the Bikram system and in the uh, Bikram trainings. I've led or taught at 28 trainings and probably hundreds of thousands of students. I have conducted countless yoga workshops and seminars, and I still do that. I love getting out and teaching workshops and visiting uh, studios. I've been to, I don't know how many yoga studios I've been to. And since 1998, I've helped numerous studio owners. When I was in the Bikram training in 98, I was valedictorian of our class and gave the speech. And I actually said in my speech that I wasn't gonna teach yoga or own a studio, but I'd help other studio owners in their business. And now I'm doing that um, pretty much on a full-time basis. I do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching and group coaching. I, last year, I released the number one best-selling yoga book called Falling Down, Getting Up. Some of you may have heard of that. Releasing another book this year, a co-author book with some other authors that will be out in October 2013. I'm really super excited about that. That's called Expert Success Solutions. And I've had a lot of experience uh, prior to 98 in things like Frank. Uh, franchising and financing and real estate, small business, etc. So that's a little bit about who I am. Okay, so I hope you got your notepad ready and let's get going. Okay, so what, what is one of the best ways to serve your yoga community? And that's to create a healthy, vibrant, profitable yoga studio. A busy studio, like this picture suggests, um, is much better than a empty studio. One of the ways that we can tell how well we're serving our community is how much money we're bringing the door and how much our profits are. So let's just keep going. So a basic yoga principle, rule number one, breathing. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Obviously, when we're in asana, if we're not breathing, we're going to have some some problems. Yeah, there's maybe an exception or two in some postures, but we got to keep breathing, not only in yoga, but in life too. With that thought in mind, a basic business principle is rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. 
So income and profits in your yoga business is important as breathing in asana. And it's really important to learn to master both. And it doesn't matter whether you're a yoga teacher or a yoga studio owner. Obviously, yoga studio owners, um, it's their business. And at the same time, a yoga teacher sometimes is hesitant to do anything but teach. And they don't want to be in, involved in the business of the studio. And in my experience, that's generally a mistake with some exception. Uh, but that's generally a mistake. And the more that a teacher can learn about the business of yoga, um, it's likely that the studio and where they work is going to do better. And it's likely that 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 teacher will also create more income. Um, in the past, I've actually paid as much as three thousand dollars a month in bonus to teachers. So teachers, once they know um, about the business, can can make a lot of money, too. OK. So let's talk about vital drivers. We already talked about the vitalness of breath in um, yoga asana and profits in your studio. So what is vital? Like in the studio, sometimes we forget what is vital and we, we deal with things that really aren't that important. So what is vital? Let's do a little comparison here. Hands. Are hands vital? Well, yeah, you'd say hands are vital. We need it to write. We need it to eat. We need it to brush teeth. But if you're missing a hand, you still have another hand. Even if you're missing both hands, um, you can probably still fi find a way or prosthesis or um, different things to be able to eat. What about the heart? Well, obviously, the heart is extremely vital. Um, if your heart goes out, you go out and the breathing won't matter because your heart won't be beating. So you could say that your heart is more important than your hands. Kidneys. Well, you got two kidneys. Um, if you gave one and often people give one away to somebody else, you're still going to be okay and live. But if you stop breathing, your kidneys aren't going to matter at all. So just a couple of ideas in the studio, what is more important, cash flow or profits? And certainly any time along the way here, if you want to type a question into the site or a comment, um, please do. I mean, if you think cash flow or profits is more important, go ahead and put what you think is more important in there. It's not the same for everybody. I will tell you that. Um, new students or retention, what's more important? That's kind of a tough one. Uh, smelly room or clean towels. A lot of yoga studios have smelly rooms um, or clean towels. What's more important, employees or contractors? It could depend upon your business setup, what, whatever it is, uh, but one could be more important. Uh, a hot room, if, if you have a hot room in your yoga studio, such as a Bikram studio or more students. What's more important? Is it more important that your temperature is exactly 110 degrees or is it more important that you have 30 people in class versus 12 people in class? So some, sometimes, again, we get caught up in things that maybe aren't quite as important. So you can maybe take a look at what's really vital to you and then spend the time on what really makes sense and what will really help your particular business thrive. So let's get into the mistakes. Mistake number three, and then we'll get to, to mistake number one, and then I'm also going to show you some ideas that you can use to specifically make money. So mistake number three. I see this all the time. Again, I don't know how many studios I've been into, um, how many studio owners I've coached over the years, countless. One of the number one, or it's not one of the number one, it's one of the top three. The top, the third uh, biggest mistake is lack of clear plan for profits. They don't sit down and they don't really have any idea how they're going to make profits. They just think that they're going to open up the door and they're going to come. Well, that doesn't work anymore in this business. We have to open up the door and tell people to come. So it's a little bit different. We'll get into telling people to come as well. So there's three types of planners. So think about this. I don't know what which type you are. Feel free again to, to we're going to go through three types here, um, whether you're type one, two, or three. 
And I know that I've gone through all this myself. Everything that I'm talking about are all things that I've done and mistakes that I've learned from. So three types of planners. Number one, those that have a fuzzy idea of what they want and then create fuzzy plans and get fuzzy results. I don't know how many of you are like that, but it's really easy to kind of go, oh, I, I, I want to have this. And then you kind of have a fuzzy plan about what that is, but you never really do anything about it. And it's just all fuzzy. So number two, those that have a great idea of what they want and then create the fuzzy plans and get some results. So they might really have this great idea of what they want and they're really motivated and they kind of have a vague idea, a fuzzy kind of plan to get there and they get some results and it's okay, but it's not really the results that they, they really want to have. And number three, those that know exactly what they want then create specific plans to get what they want and say, and succeed at it. So those that are able to know exactly what they want and they create those plans um, are going to be able to get the results they want. We'll, we'll talk more about goals here as well. So how do you do that? Write a yearly sales plan, write a monthly plan. There are so many studios that I know that don't even have a yearly sales plan or a monthly plan. It's just a vague idea of what they think that they want to make next month. They have to implement the plan, create profits. I'm a huge proponent, as I mentioned earlier, about sharing profits with employees and rewarding all employees. So here is an example of a monthly sales plan that I've used that's really great. Um, so the first under month is just, month uh september total sales thirty thousand dollars net profit six thousand dollars um intro how many you're going to sell and what the price is this is your breakdown of what you're going to sell and how you're going to get to that monthly sales plan i differentiate a little bit between uh plan and goals we have to create goals to reach our plan but i'm just going to give a brief analogy here if you're laying in a hospital bed and you need gallbladder surgery and a surgeon comes in, uh, one surgeon comes in and he says, you know, I, I have this goal today of going in and, and taking out your gallbladder and I think everything will be okay. Well, that sounds kind of fuzzy. I know I would rather have a surgeon that, that comes in and says, okay, your gallbladder needs to re be removed. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut a half inch incision right here um, it's going to end up, you're going to have 10 stitches, but we're going to open this up. We're going to go in. We're going to cut this skull bladder off. We're going to take it out. We're going to give you some internal stitches. We're going to stitch up the outside, and then we'll be done, and you'll be out of the hospital in a day or two. To me, that's the difference between a plan and a goal. You can see here at the bottom two percentage of, prof, or percentage of profits that I bonus to staff, percentage of profits that I bonus to self number of classes I teach, number of classes others teach. So I think right here is a great place to write down how many classes you're going to teach and as well as others. Each month it might vary a little bit, but be real clear about that. And how many days off? If you're not taking days off, you're not taking any time. You know, they say even God rested on the seventh day. And uh, if God can do it, we can do it too. So find a, a day that you can take off every week, at least one. I know sometimes yoga studio owners think that they're taking a day off on Sunday and they go in and practice at the studio, but that's not a day off, an actual day off away from the business. So this is a great uh, sales plan. I don't know whether some of you jotted this down or not. Um, and there's a question here. Again, uh, Patty, we will get to this question. The question is, is it good to sell one year unlimited yoga? And what do you think about month to month EFT? So that's auto pays. Uh, so we will address that question. Uh, mistake number two, lack of clear and detailed retention plan. A lot of studios, they have no retention plan. It's nothing written out about how they're going to retain students. Again, it's kind of vague and kind of fuzzy. And this is one, one of the really one of the the big ones, you know, and they just kind of vaguely talk. They don't really know what to say at, at the front desk. 
They don't know how to integrate newsletters um, and the importance of newsletters. Um, they don't know how to ask for referrals. They don't know how to stay in, in contact uh, with the students. So this will create low attendance and lack of, of cash flow, pretty straight up. Uh, and then oftentimes I see studio owners go into panic mode because they're not getting enough people coming into the door. So one of the first things they think they need to do is to slash prices. They might even cut classes. They think expenses, expenses. I got to cut this expense. I got to cut that expense. They think they need to cut pay. Oftentimes studio owners, I know studio owners that haven't paid themselves in months and some for even several years. That is a nonprofit business and it's not a very healthy way to run a business or a yoga studio. Then they go out and they start uh, borrowing money and then the whole panic mode starts all over again. Um, so that's no good. So retention plan. One of the things that's really super important in any marketing that is done is lead everything with benefits and value. And again, I'm going to show you an example here in a minute about the, the difference between leading with benefits and value and leading with money. So it's always super important to lead everything with benefits and still in the marketing and in the students and in the people that are reading your marketing um, that there's value, value, value and benefits, 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 health benefits. Um, um, stress, whatever it is. The number one yoga studio is a woman in her mid 30s making $50,000 a year that's coming to yoga for stress. So how do you market to somebody like that for the, for the benefits of reducing that stress? Establish credibility. So establishing your credibility, your studio's credibility is really super important. There's many different ways to create to do that. Uh, create a sales guide. Again, most yoga studios don't have any type of sales guide. They may have instructions um, to teach class, to teach postures. Um, in the case of, of, of the Bikram studios, there's a dialogue that said pretty much word for word. So why not have a create that same type of system at the front desk that everybody's on the same page with? The retention plan. The average studio does about 20% retention, about one out of five people. I've seen it as low as um, nine or 10%. But if, if you could double your retention to 40%, that would be huge. And part of that is the way that we lead with our marketing. Uh, send monthly newsletters. If people don't buy the first time, that doesn't mean that they're not going to buy. So those monthly newsletters are going to those people that have come into your yoga studio that may not have come back after the intro, but then they keep getting the newsletters. Um, have frequent events. I'm a huge proponent of frequent events, and you can do it where it costs little or no money as well. The mission that I have had posted at my yoga studios was teach with love. I actually had a sign in the teacher area that said that we talked a lot about that, about what it meant to teach with love and celebrate your students. There's different ways of doing that. Um, uh, student of, of the month is, is an example on how to celebrate your students, but there's really a really good system to do that, that really gets out there and many people see it as well. And why not from time to time, a student that has a particular um, change a, a huge value that they've received maybe their all their back pain went went away maybe they healed their knee whatever why not throw a press release out to the local press and say um, xyz student healed them their back pain um so celebrate your students as much as possible and we talked a little bit about this right front desk scripts have something very specific about what you want to say and there is a difference on what we had to say one of the mistakes that i used to do in um, my first studio was when people came to the front desk and they wanted to buy something i would say how many times are you going to come to class and i realized that that was really the wrong thing to be saying that really a better thing that could be said would be, and you might want to write this down because this is really important, would be what do you want out of your yoga practice? 
Um, so those type of things are really important is take a look at the words that are being used and set at the front desk and actually practice this. I know sometimes it's hard to have teacher meetings and not all teachers want to show up, but it's really super important. And if you include them in what you're doing, they will want to show up with that. Be consistent with your message. Everybody needs to be on, on the same page. Um, have a core product. Um, my opinion and my experience is that auto pay um, should be the core product. And this comes back to the front desk scripts. If somebody comes in and they have a bum knee or a back or they want to lose weight, almost regardless of, of what it is, when what do you want out of your yoga practice? Somebody says, well, I'd like to get over my back pain. Well, really the way to do that, you need to come at least three to five times a week, which is true. You need to do that. And then they go, oh, great. That's what I want to do. Okay, well, then it's best if you do the auto pay $99 a month or whatever the price is. Um, and that's what most people do. Students love that. So instead of leading with the price, how much the price is, lead with the value and the benefits and direct them to what can serve them best. And obviously someone with a, with um, back pain or shoulder pain or what, whatever it is, they're going to get served best by coming at least three to five times a week. Um, minimal packages. If you took a look at um, the monthly sales plan, you saw that it had minimal packages. Um, intro, drop in, one month, 20 class, auto pay, and yearly. That's it. Lots of studios have 5, 10, 20, 40, 80 uh, class packages. I'm not a big fan of that. There's too many choices. And if you're leading people into the auto pay, because that is really what serves them, um, then having, like, say, a three month or a six month doesn't make sense if you set up your auto pay uh, correctly. So let, let's go and we're, we'll answer more of your question as well here, Patty, too. Remember, just because somebody doesn't buy the first time doesn't mean that they will never buy. I mean, how many times have you walked into the store and you didn't buy anything, and but the fifth time in the store, you actually bought something? And it's the same with the yoga studio. Just because somebody comes in on their intro doesn't mean that they're not going to come back again. So they may come in and do the intro a year later, maybe do the intro again, maybe a year later, do the intro again. By all means, let them do that. Maybe that third time they realize that they're going to buy a year and they want to be totally committed to the practice. Um, so having that retention plan, having that ability to continue to communicate with that student through the newsletters and other means is really super important. Mistake number one. This may surprise some, some people, but again, this is my experience of, of looking at studio owners is I, I ask them what they want in their lives and they say, I don't know. They're just, there's no clear or detailed personal and business vision. Um, they're not really sure. They just know that they really want to do um, yoga, but they really aren't clear about how to do that. They had some money to open up the studio. They opened up the studio, but that was about it. Again, that comes back to kind of that fuzzy idea and the, the fuzzy plans. So it's really important to have very detailed personal and business vision. So what is your uh, vision? Um, get clear on it. It will really, really help you. So what do you want in your life? I'm a huge proponent of following your passion and being a yoga teacher myself, a yoga studio owner, and knowing um, other teachers and owners. It's a huge passion. This is what we, we love to do. Maybe we healed ourselves through yoga and we want to show other people and we just love it and we cannot stop doing it. So what do you want in your life in one year, three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Actually create a bucket list. Many people have never created a bucket list. It's kind of, again, a, a vague idea in their head that one day they will do it. Well, one day is not today. So I'd encourage to actually sit down and start your bucket list today. Um, and just, like I said, write it all down. So I'm a proponent of uh, vision boards. And so create a vision for your personal life. Write it out. Create a vision board. Display it. Put it someplace you see it all the time. 
There's so many people that I know that have done this type of activity and then they find, oh my God, that's happening. I have that jacket. I, I have that car. I'm, I'm doing this. So it's really super important to do this just on a personal level for your sh yourself. Uh, remember that, you know, don't really let the business own you. The, 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 you should be able to own the business. So instead of the, the business, you know, you being a slave to the business, the business, the business should run based on what your vision and what your preferred lifestyle is. I'm also a huge proponent to create a, a separate vision for your yoga business. And I would even encourage you to consider having a vision party for with the students and have a party, have dessert, have tea there available. Ask people to cut out different um, little pictures or whatever. And maybe, you know, they're creating a vision not only for themselves, but you also create a vision for your yoga studio and you put the vision board up on display. And again, this is something that you can um, promote through Facebook. You can have it on your uh, newsletters. And, you know, it keeps it out there. It keeps you in front of people. It gives people the idea that you care about them and your yoga studio. And you do. So this is a, one of the ways to help um, express that. So let's just go over the three biggest mistakes again. Number three, lack of clear plan for profits. Number two, lack of clear and detailed retention plan. And number one, lack of clear and detailed personal and business vision. So I would consider or I would um, invite you to consider each one of these. Take a look at what is true for you and how clear you really are on these things. So it's really that lack of clarity. OK, so let's talk a little bit now about some specific um, ideas and specific ways people lose money. Um, studios, they will have a summer sale on low price packages. What I mean by that is even a 20 class card. Maybe they have a 20 class card for 200 and they sell it for $100. I mean, just crazy. Or they, they sell three months for only 199. They think it's the only way to keep people coming into the studio or the reduced classes. What it's you're actually doing when you reduce the prices, you're actually reducing the value and benefits that people perceive in what you're selling. So you should never really reduce that value. So you've got to be very, very careful when you do do sales, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, about how you approach that. So in this case, um, for $190 for three months, you have to sell 50 packages for $9,950. That's not very much. For most studios, that's maybe part of the expenses. I mean, it's a real low expense studio. If your expenses are only 10 grand, most are probably going to be in the 16 to 22,000 range, uh, some more depending upon rent. Um, and again, where do you find 50 students to buy this package? So why offer a low price package? I see people doing uh, 10 class cards for ridiculous amounts. Um, so there's minimal student commitment, minimal student attendance. And one thing that that's not here is it reduces the perceived value of what you are offering. So here's a couple examples. 10 classes at $49. They're offering $120 worth of 10 yoga classes for only $40. $9. That's a 59% discount. You can buy this deal today. I've actually seen that advertised in a newsletter, and that was what they led with, was just that. Can you imagine? I mean, to sell, to make $2,450, you need to sell at least 50 packages. That's a lot of packages. 20 classes, $89. Again, this is real world. This is what I see some studios doing. Again, to get $4,450, they got to sell 50 packages. So they're leading with this price. Now, an annual is a little bit different. Um, here, you only need 20 people. And in this example, $999 is $19,980. Is $19 so look how much more money you can make. Now, I'm a proponent of both 
yearly unlimited yoga, and auto pay. I think that there's a mix. And as part of the, the yearly sales plan, there should be a look at how many yearlies you're going to sell and how many auto pays you're going to sell. And then you break that down into to monthly. And I'm going to give you an ex, a very specific example here. Um, this is direct from what I learned. Yearly unlimited sale builds commitment. In August 2007, I lost $4,176. In August 2008, I made $7,476. That is after all expenses paid. That's after my salary was paid and everything else. I increased my student visits by uh, over 500 people. Now, the way that I did this, I had a normal yearly sales per, or uh, normal yearly on my price list at 1097 knowing I would never sell it for that price. So August 1st through 10th, I had a single payment, $927. And I led with commit yourself, could commit to yourself on all levels of your health. Talked a little bit about that. Then I got into the price. Then, um, then you make a plan to sell 20. So if you sell 20, again, it's $18,540. And then the following year, I had a sale in July, not in August, but in July for that, made the goal, sold 20 of them. So I picked up 20 new people in July. And in August, from the previous year's buyers, they all bought again too. So this perception and this idea that, oh, I'm going to lose money in the summer, um, people are not going to come to the studio, et cetera. This is right here in Bend, Oregon, one of the premier recreation areas in the country, and people hike, bike, ski, kayak, you name it. But what we did, we attached the value and the importance of, of the yoga and actually increase the business. So if you think that you have this idea that you cannot make money in the summer, I would invite you to reconsider that. And so rather than focusing on how many people you can bring in in January, which is important, don't misunderstand me, but also focus on the idea that yes, you can make money in the summer. And once you start making money in the summer, you can start to make profits every single month. Um, I, I actually was able to, with my cash flow, is when I broke it down in quarter every three months, when I broke it down, there was only a three to $5,000 difference between each quarter, January through March, April through June, July through September, October through December. So each one of those, so they were really even cash flow. So I didn't have $60,000 cash flow in January and $7,000 cash flow in August. It was all balanced out. Um, so it can be done if you know how to do it. So let's keep going. Okay. Mentioned about the goals and how important this is and how this relates to vision. So those that are that achieve their goals, 80 to 90% write down their goals, create the action plan, share with the friend, and send a weekly progress report. So this isn't my statistic. This is actual uh, survey statistics, um, university le level studies, Harvard studies that show this. Um, so if you actually write it down, and that goes back even to the monthly sales plan that we looked at, um, that will help you do that. But even before that is the, the vision plans. Okay. So here's some ideas. Create your profitable yoga business. I got this great little picture. I loved it, so I put it up. My purpose is to use my charisma and creativity to entertain and inspire others to raise their vibration and live joyfully. I just love that. What, what an incredible thought and idea, and um, wouldn't that be wonderful, something like that posted in uh, your yoga studio. So create a personal vision, create a business vision, and create a profit plan. Um, those things together will help you. Okay, so I want to explain to you what, why I'm offering um, this these webinars that I do from time to time for no charge. Um, and it's really, I'm offering this 
because I'm really committed to the yoga studios and I really have found that um, not only as, as a yoga teacher, but I can help more yoga studios build their business. And then that means more people will be doing yoga. And I ask you that if you find value in, in the help that I offer here on my webinars, that you take a look at my coaching and what I'm doing. So I'm looking right now for 15 committed teachers and studio owners that want to serve their yoga community by creating a healthy, vibrant, profitable yoga business. Uh, my next session um, with my next uh, series, my first session starts next Tuesday at that time. And we're going to really jump in and really focus on creating your vision and spend some time. Uh, doing that. This is a group web webinar type system. We have open phone lines, so there's lots of interaction. And what, what I find that has happened in these particular sessions, we have everybody from somebody that's ready to open up a, a yoga studio to somebody that's maybe been open for 10 or 12 years. So in many ways, we could call it a mastermind too, because there's a lot of interaction. There's a lot of connection. And there's a lot of ability and insight that people have that they can share with each other. Okay. So the Yoga Business Expert Core Essentials is the profit system for studio owners and teachers that want to do what they love and be paid well to do it. Here is the URL. We'll go there in a minute. I want to show it to you. And I would invite you to consider it if it makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. But write down this special code, um, YOGA200. And I'll tell you about that in just a moment. So let's go over there right now. And okay. So if you haven't seen my website, the yogabusinessexpert.com, and under the coaching page is the Yoga Business Expert Core Essentials. So what this is, it's a complete program that I've developed over the years. I have so much content. We have um, a membership website as well as online uh, webinar. And what we do, we really show you step by step exactly how to operate a yoga studio for profit. We get down to the nitty gritty. We do precisely every step along the way. So if you're ready to take massive action, if you're ready to uh, maybe create profits in your studio or you're ready to open up a yoga studio, um, this thing or this program will, will really help you. We have lots of uh, video training, live webinar sessions. Uh, you also there's hundreds and hundreds of pages of downloadable swipe pile, files, business plans, marketing plans, newsletter copy. What I what I do with the, uh, uh, the the Bikram Studios, if you're a Bikram Studio and you want newsletter copy, I have all the copy for all the postures that you can um, inject into your personal newsletter. You just need to throw the picture in, but all the copies are already written. I have sales scripts. We talked about the sales scripts and the importance of those at the front desk. I have actual sales scripts that you can use as well. And then there's also one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I just uh, walk through this briefly. Um, here are some of the, the steps, the really powerful steps that are part of the program, creating your vision, business plans, marketing that rocks, your plan of action, newsletters, et cetera. So I've br broken it into two, Core Essentials 1 and Core Essentials 2. Um, and then in, in Core Essentials 2, we really take it to the next level. Um, and I really get into some media training that's real scary for some people, but how you can go to uh, the local media and really become the local expert, the go-to expert. This helps in so many different ways. It builds your cre credibility and you have to do less paid advertising. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of paid advertising. So this is a way to really become the local go-to expert. And then you even put that on, on the website um, as seen on local, whatever the show is. 
And there's lots of, um, I actually give you scripts as well to use for that and, ver and scripts on how to actually talk to the media and how to propose um, segments for TV, et cetera. Um, teaching with excellence. One of the things I really love to do is get into teaching. Um, other than, in, in, at least in, in the Bikram community, I was the first person other than Bikram to teach foster clinic in the trainings in, in 1998. I didn't know that until after I'd done that, and, and Rajashri told me that. And um, it's something that is just a huge passion of mine is really getting in, into the teaching. Uh, systems and procedures, we're going to get into that. It seems like such a boring thing, but I really want to instill all these things in as many studios as possible so you can really start to run your business on autopilot and perhaps take a few more vacations along the beach somewhere. Um, we've got uh, bonuses, websites. Uh, I got a, a, a web expert that will come in and talk all about websites, what the latest is, how to do it, why to do it, uh, what the latest marketing is. We have lots of open calls, uh, Core Essentials 1, Core Essentials 2, there's private coaching. If you go into Core, core Essentials 2, um, you get three 30-minute one-on-one private calls uh, with me to talk specifically about uh, your business. And the way that I would suggest to do that is early on is to do one of them, about midway, do the second one, and towards the end, do the third one. And what all this is designed to do, again, is to give you a plan of action to take massive action to create profits in your studio. Uh, you can come back and look at this. This is the whole schedule of the live webinars. Um, but don't worry, if you miss a live webinar, everything is recorded for review and replay. And all of this gets posted for you to see in, in a private area just for you. So my mission in doing this is to increase your profits before you are even halfway through. And I have several examples of that. I had an Australian studio owner last time in 72 hours of starting the program. He increased his sales nearly $30,000. And Eva, here's, here's a uh, recommendation from her. So there's a couple of catches. Number one, you're a certified yoga teacher. And number two, you are ready to take massive action to create profits teaching yoga. I just have a huge passion about this and I really want to work with people that are just ready to jump right in and go for it. Um, here, all, all the pricing, all, all the buying information, so the, the difference between uh, one and two. Um, so this is the pricing for everything. And remember the code, the yoga 200. So that applies to Core Essentials 2. So the single payment wouldn't be $11.95, it'd be $9.95, and you just enter it and it's all taken care of. Um, and all that's here, so I encourage you to come back. And I, I want to tell you something, too, is this, I really believe in giving lots of value and lots of benefit to you. And if for any reason it doesn't work out for you, I offer a 100% one-year money-back guarantee. I mean, I'm, I'm that um, committed to you and to your success and knowing that this will work. And again, one aha moment can change everything. So let's go back to, um, oops, where are we? There we are. Okay. Let's go back to, to this. And, uh, if there, if any of you have any questions, if you'd like to go ahead and type it in on the side there, um, and we got a few minutes. We went a little bit longer today than than 30 minutes, uh, but we got through everything. Um, please, please, please feel free to email me, call me. My email, it's not posted up here, is Michael at Yoga Business Expert. Dot com, um, or you can also call me as well, 541-633-7210, uh, 541-633-7210. So I, I hope you found value in today's presentation. 
if you're ready to uh, take some massive action and want to jump in, I'd love for you to join me on our next session starting next Tuesday. Again, we're just going to jump in, help you create massive value for your studio to help you create profits, to help you increase the value of your studio for one day you might even want to sell it. So I hope you can join us. Um, again, feel free to contact me. I'm open for any uh, questions, comments, ideas, and um, I'm just ready to get started. Oh, okay. Uh, something else came in here. Love it, Michael. You're the bomb. Thanks, dude. I, I appreciate it. And um, I will talk to you soon. I, I haven't told you yet, but I'm actually going to be up in uh, Canada in a couple of weeks. So I, I will catch up with you. Um, okay. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And um, again, please feel free to contact me and uh, we'll talk soon. Talk to you later.